Right now on KSL 5 News at 6, digging through the evidence. I can wait all day, so it's up to you if you want to talk to us about what's going on. KSL investigates newly released audio of phone conversations Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt made from jail. Then hiding in Haiti. We can't leave our kids behind in a war. Why one Utah woman says she's stuck in the embattled country as gang violence and unrest plague the streets. And bringing home the bacon. Kevin Bacon, you with us? Hi, everybody. The huge surprise for students at Payson High School from the man himself. What Kevin Bacon is promising that won't soon be forgotten. KSL News at 6 starts now. Well, we're getting a look at newly released evidence detailing the day former YouTube creator Ruby Frankie and counselor Jody Hildebrandt were arrested. Both women are in prison after pleading guilty to abusing two of Frankie's children. We do have team coverage for you tonight. KSL investigator Daniela Rivera has a look at some of the new audio recordings. But let's start things off with Shelby Lofton. She has been digging through the documents all day long. And Shelby, you have been covering this case since the very beginning. And Mike and Ashley, we want viewers to know we promise to be careful and thoughtful in our reporting on this sensitive material. When we took Chopper 5 down to Ivan's the day after Ruby Frankie's children were found in Jody Hildebrand, Hildebrand's home, neighbors told us they were aware there was police activity. Loads of video, video photos, and written evidence released today gave us the clearest picture of what happened the day, that day in the months since. Step out of the house. Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're just going to stand in the house. Wait a minute, how do you come to my house? Right a little boy who managed to escape this house of horrors to ask for help led police to this home on August 30th. The home owned by formerly licensed mental health counselor Jody Hildebrandt. The police search came after a neighbor reported a young, malnourished child with severe wounds showed up on his doorstep. You come on, buddy. I am a police officer. Officers found the child's sibling still inside Hildebrandt's house. It took several first responders to coax the child out of a closet. Uh, okay. Their condition brought one medic to tears. Officers explored every corner of the house, including a safe room. Inside, they found ropes and bindings used to hold down the children. They also photographed a cayenne pepper and honey tincture used to dress both children's wounds on their wrists and ankles. I'm a little nervous. At the police station, Hildebrandt said officers didn't know the full story. You knew all the pieces. I think you have a lot of empathy for well, what's going on. She refused to talk to police without her lawyer, the same route her business partner, Ruby Frankie, took. Oh, wait till I have a lawyer. While her children were put on a three-day medical hold at a nearby hospital, she stared at officers, refusing to answer any questions. And in the months leading up to their arrest, Ruby Frankie kept a journal detailing what she and Hildebrandt did to the children. Her final entries, one written just three days before their arrest, discussed plans she had with Hildebrandt to move the children to Arizona. Now both women will serve at least four years in prison. Back to you. Yeah, and I know that video is just a portion of what we know now, but it's just so hard to see some of those uh, images there. Shelby, thank you. Well, that arrest happening almost seven months ago. Both women have since pleaded guilty to aggravated child abuse and are serving prison sentences. Yeah, KSL investigator Danielle Rivera join us right now with what the women said in the days after their arrest recorded on jailhouse phone lines. Danny? Well, that's right. The calls from jail that were included in the case files now give us some insight into how the women viewed the investigation and the charges against them and what changed once the two were separated and behind bars. Stoic and mostly silent. I'll wait till I have a lawyer. Okay. So, not this at all. Ruby Frankie didn't talk to investigators the day of her arrest last August. Neither did Jody Hildebrandt. So I trust my attorney. He said, don't say anything. But from jail, the women did talk over the phone. This is the witch hunt. The day after her arrest, during calls with the man we believe is her estranged husband, Kevin Frankie, Ruby justifies her actions. Adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil and what that takes to fight it. Weeks after her arrest, Hildebrandt denies responsibility for one of the children's severe injuries. We didn't do that. We didn't do that. Those pictures we did not do. I mean, I should be here. I haven't done anything wrong. In September, Frankie was still defending Hildebrandt. 
poor Jody. They they misinterpret her. They misunderstand her. She puts her neck out on the line for people, and then they get mad at her. I mean, it is just horrendous. But by early December, Frankie's perspective on her once friend and business partner seems to shift. And I think just being gone and not hearing her has cleared a lot of things up for me. A few weeks later, Frankie had this to say about Hildebrandt's decision to plead guilty. The only reason she pled is because she didn't want to do life. She knew I would testify. The most recent call from Hildebrandt is from February, after her guilty plea. And the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. That statement right there is what's going on with me. In one of Frankie's calls, she talks about the differences in the two women's plea deals and how she might get out sooner than Hildebrandt. Frankie says she doesn't know whether she'll end up serving months in prison or several years. Both women are set to appear before Utah's parole board for the first time in September. Mike and Ashley. All right, Danny, thank you. And KSL was also in the courtroom during sentencing for both Frankie and Hildebrandt. Before learning her fate, Frankie had a much different tone than she did on the day of her arrest. I can see now that over the past four years, I was in a deep undercurrent that led us to danger. I would never have led you to darkness knowingly. I was so disoriented. Stay with KSL as we learn more about this case that is captivating the nation. You can learn more about today's revelations and get caught up on everything that's happened so far on KSLTV.com.